गुड आफ्टरनून एम आई एडिबल ओके यू मस्ट हैव ऑल गेज दैट आई एम नॉट एन आई टी गाय आई एम ए कमर्शियल गाय सो थैंक्स फुजिस्सू फॉर कॉलिंग समवन ऑन स्टेज टू एड्रेस आई टी कॉन्फ्रेंस हु मे बी वेरी क्लोज टू बी कॉल्ड आई टी नॉविस देर इज अनादर गुड न्यूज दैट आई हैव लाइक टू के एच एट सिक्स सो आई शैल नॉट बी बोरिंग विथ लैंग प्रेजेंटेशन Before I start, let me tell you something about my company so that you can understand what I'm talking about. I come from a state-owned electricity power distribution company. This company is responsible for supplying power into the 15 districts of the Madhya Pradesh, western part of the Madhya Pradesh to be precise. We supply electricity to about 45 lakh households and commercial establishments, industries, etc. Our annual revenues are to the tune of 10,000 crore, and as is the case with almost all power distribution utilities in the country, we are also making huge losses. With that background, I will tell you we took a small, modest, humble journey on this path of IT. Our partner was Fujitsu in this journey. so we did a implementation of erp in our organization and this presentation is besides precisely about sharing our experiences and maybe if there are any users who are planning to implement this kind of systems in their organization they can benefit from our experiences first question is why why should we go about it this would not be a question in a private organization but this is a big question in a government organization why and that is a question which is internal as well as external internal because if you do not take any initiative no one is going to ask you no one is going to come you have why you are ceo you are a chief it officer you are a director why not are you doing it no one is going to ask you that question secondly if you want to do it really you have to stick your neck out you have to make things happen and you have to collect and obtain active collaboration and cooperation of so many stakeholders it is so difficult in a government organization so why it so happened a small story i'll tell you my managing director had visited south africa he had gone there and the south african utility made a presentation before them they said sir we have implemented this erp system this is very good this has cut our administrative cost drastically and it has facilitated our business greatly and sir wonderful thing about this is initially we started this project as a it project we gave it to our it guy and it guy failed he could not implement then we gave it to our finance guy and he did deliver it so happened that at that point of time in my organization i was the director of finance so md told me that now you have to do it so why partly answered why but secondly i myself has been a very keen evangelist of it kind of things in my organization so i was also obvious choice these were the problems which we were facing obviously everyone almost every organization is facing these challenges electricity more because electricity is a regulated business since it is a regulated business you have to satisfy humongous data needs of your regulators every month every quarter and almost every day they would seek all kind of information from you and i tell you it is well nigh impossible to satisfy those data needs with manual systems so that is one thing regularity then taxation you know over period of time i think over a short period of 5 years how this income tax department this commercial tax department excise department every government department how they were really computerized themselves now they want all kind of details to be collected by yourself and to be uploaded onto their system they do not require any manual intervention to issue a tax evasion notice do they they do not so if you are to really be compliant of those taxation related requirements you have to have automated systems and unfortunately i was the guy who was handling finance and facing the 
taxation authorities and I did not have good IT system at my place. So this was the reason. Of course, lack of standardization, cumbersome processes, lack of accurate and timely data for decision making were other reasons. So how we went about it? Basically, in government departments, you don't have IT savvy people or even big IT departments. Even if you have IT people, they are in very junior positions. They do not exercise that kind of control and authority over the say of the organization. So what happened? I was made in charge of this project along with my existing responsibilities. Then there were two other people. We three started to think what is to be done. So first thing we did, as any good manager should do in a government organization, we should hire a consultant. Of course, good way to start. So we first hired a consultant, PwC. Then we sat together with the PwC to design a good document. Good, good document to invite services from a system integrator. So we prepared the bid, and that was very, very crucial part. Many people would not like to go into the details when they are preparing that RFP. But I tell you, you really need to engage intensively with your consultants to design a good RFP. And if you don't do it, you will sooner or later regret it. So you have to put your efforts over there. Then select a good SI. We had TCS. Now I do not know whether that is a good news or a bad news. There are many views. We had TCS. Then along with, we sat together with TCS and our consultants, which is PwC and prepared a bid for hardware. Then, when hardware vendor was also selected, we created a core team of functional users who shall be responsible for implementing and using these systems. So that is how we created our internal team and then set with the SI team to design the user interface. Now, that may look something pretty obvious that may also look to some people very simple. But problem is that unless you get your user interface right, you are never going to make any software project work in your organization. So this user interface, understanding the processes, and building the key components of that process into the standardized solution is very, very, very important. I cannot more emphasize it. So design, redesign, and again redesign till you get it right. That is the key. Then train people. In my organization, we had average age of people approaching 50 plus. A lot of them had never even touched a mouse in their lives. So that was the challenge before us to make those people learn how to use a computer first rather than use an ERP. So that was the background from where we started. And then we did a pilot, redesigned, went to the drawing board again to incorporate the learnings from the pilot, and then implemented. What was the project coverage? As I told you, we supply electricity into the 15 districts of Madhya Pradesh. So those 15 districts covering near about 600 different offices in the field. And the functional coverage was to supply chain management, finance, projects, and human resources. The location of our data center was in Indore, and the disaster recovery center was in Jawalpur. These were the project components, software, IT infrastructure and the hardware, networking, and DCDR. So software selection, as I told you, we really have to be very careful when we design a SRS document and uh, invite bits for the SI. Because we were very careful, at the time of designing the bid, we were able to get top of the line software for in response to our bid. So we mm, got the bids for ERP implementation from Oracle. Oracle BI suit, Oracle Hyperion, Oracle databases, Oracle op operating system on uh, operating system on the Linux, Windows servers, SQL servers, 
then network and monitoring tool were from BMS and other software like virtualization of servers and backup and antivirus and proxy services. So this entire software suite was offered to us in response to our bid document. IT hardware, we really had to have a very big IT hardware because our organization is very big and the volume of the operation is huge. So we have 46 Fujitsu Rake servers, SAN storage, tape libraries, network devices, at DC as well as DR. This is the real picture of our data center, and I will tell you, this data center, gentlemen, was created in three flat months. As happens with so many of the government tenders, what had happened with us, the person who had bid for creation of data center actually did not deliver. When he was not delivering, our software guy, TCS, had prepared his software, and we were disparate. This project was almost going down the drains because if you have software ready and if you do not have hardware, where would you host the hardware and what would happen to your project? So that was a problem with us. During three flat months, we had to sort out the issues and get this data center ready. And in this, Fujitsu really held us very well. These are the key infrastructure components in our data center. Fujitsu Rake server, storage, tape libraries, Cisco routers, switches, firewalls, array networks, load balancer, Symantec, Mel gateway appliances, immersion, Honeywell, Cummins, all the regular stuff. This is our data center building management system. This is our network architecture. We have a data center at Indore and disaster recovery center at Jawalpur. Both are connected by a 30 Mbps link. Then 15 core critical offices are connected by a primary link from Reliance and secondary link from a statewide area network, which is one and which is free for us. Then other 200 offices are linked with two Mbps one link. Another 400 offices are accessing this solution through VPN and DC is connected to internet for connecting this to, uh, VPN clients with a 20 Mbps uh, link from BSNL. And within offices also, we have multiple users at multiple locations. Let a office can be a very big building, so we have lead optical fiber. This is our dat data center NOC. And these are the core modules which we implemented while doing ERP. Supply chain, finance, project, and HR. All the standard processes which come with the ERP solution have been implemented in our organization. Finance particularly was important for us for the reasons I shared with you. Success of the project can be gauged from this fact that beyond ERP, while we were implementing it, we were able to go and do many things which were not originally envisaged in the project charter. That was in-house application portal, which is called Durjas. Now, I think my utility is among very few state government-owned utilities in the country which have an application, you can download it from Google Play Store, which is called Urjas. On this Urjas portal, you can log your complaints regarding billing problems. You can make application for obtaining new connection. You can make application for load reduction. You can make application for load enhancement. You can make fuse of call complaints and things like that. This has been made live. And this confidence, we arrived only when we implemented this ERP project. Then there is a departmental portal, and almost free of cost, we were able to create from open source softwares an email client, a fully functional email system within our organization. And that was much beyond the charter of what ERP was. These were the project timelines. In three years, we were able to finish this project from September 11 to November 14. And this solution design phase took the long, longest period, almost three years. But parallelly, we were doing many things like setting up the infrastructure, providing the computer systems to field offices, training people, things like that. 
This is among the least cost implementation of ERP system of this size in country. Many people who are industry expert would know. 29 crore is next to nothing for ERP implementation of this size. 3,800 users, 600 different offices, DC, DR, then recurring cost is only about 4.3 crore per year. And there are many reasons, however, we are able to optimize cost. These are the achievement, entire project charter from where we started, we were able to achieve, like we were able to reduce the material accounting time cycle, we were able to uh, reduce, significantly reduce the financial accounting cycle, then we were able to reduce the time it takes to execute a transaction for draw of material from stores, we were able to make this uh, pension payment system completely online, we were able to migrate an entire uh, salary payment system onto this ERP, we were able to make this process of pay making payment of vendor bills completely transparent. I believe many of you must have had opportunity to interact with government organizations. Whenever you wish, how fondly you wish, that where, what is the status of my dues, my payments, can I know, can I track? Now that is possible in my organization. Once you give your invoices, you can remotely see what has ha happened to your invoice, at what stage it is pending, and if payment has been received, you shall receive an email along with electronic payment transfer into your bank account. And Fujusu has really worked with us on this. Fujusu people will say that actually this works. These are the benefits realized from individual driven system to a standardized business process driven environment. Transactions are based on approved roles of hierarchies, so there is inherent better control, reduced time, reduced paperwork, single source of data, integration of business processes. But above all, this organizational cultural shift towards information technology. This is what our biggest achievement has been. These were the key challenges. Defining and standardizing the business processes. This is really, really, really a very, very difficult job. Very, very difficult job. I was discussing with MD Fujusu. I was telling him that only one ERP in one lifetime is good enough. You should not even attempt to do two. It will reduce your life by five, by span of five years. So that is very, very difficult thing in a government organization particularly so. Then designing user interface, considering the process play, flow and organization world culture. That is very, very important. Data collection, verification, migration, all pretty normal stuff. User training, reorientation. Lastly, you should be able and articulate and diplomatic enough to retain the support of key stakeholders for execution of this project. Because if something goes wrong, immediately so many people will come at your head that because of ERP this thing has happened, now I am not responsible. That is the moment you should have great determination, diplomacy and what you call an organization politics. You should be able to maneuver it. Unless until you do it, you won't be able to do it. Then external. Because the IT projects re really require engagement with so many stakeholders, SIs, OEMs, and so many OEMs, then financing agencies, consultants, nu numerous sub-vendors. So I mean managing the interplay of all these people so that everything happens at the right moment and in the right fashion is really a task. Finally, if in private sector you won't see, but in government sector, it so happens that some finance guy would read the contract and tell you a very particular obscure class of that contract and tell that this thing cannot be done because of that, this class. Many of people, when you have, I believe you must have dealt with government, this is how it happens. They read the contract. So there has to be some authority vested into the project in charge so that he can take judicious, fair, and quick decisions. 
In IT, so many projects fail because, precisely because of this, particularly in our country and particularly in government organizations. A few learnings which I would like to share with the audience when we implemented this system. What you should be really be careful about? Licensing. Software licensing is very, very opaque thing. So many, I mean, almost every big li software licensing vendor has got a licensing policy which possibly runs into thousands of pages. And they will, all they will tell you is, you go to our website and read it and sign on the dotted line. <laughs> this licensing is very, very difficult thing. So what we did? We said nothing doing. You come to me with a bid telling me that this shall be the cost of the software for this much users, these many users, and this is, this is, this is, this. So now, you have to be responsible if any L, anything else which is required is discovered by the OEM at a later stage. So while signing OLSA, we made TCS sign another contract with us. And that saved our, our skin. I tell you, I cannot overemphasize this point with you. They will not sign you a tertiary agreement unless and until you really force it. So be careful about it. And if you are not, sooner or later you will pay. Middleware licensing particularly is very opaque. They will tell you about the user licenses, but they do not tell you about the middleware licenses and their requirement and numbers and the core and the processor and things like that, unless you are deep into the uh, execution phase. After that, if they come, you cannot come back. So you should be very careful about it. Hardware, we all know how it is played. This bidding-based procurement is so difficult for IT projects. Why? Because if you want to create a building like this, you would have pretty good specifications, and those specifications are not going to change within a short span of time. Everyone would say that this is what a good aesthetic and good internal architecture and arrangement is like this, and this is what a good structure is. But in IT, so many things are happening that people, to create a differentiator among themselves and their competitors, come to you with a very, very limited piece of functionality which is offered by them only and no one else. And by citing that particular kind of speciality, they would ask you to incorporate that speciality into your bid documents. That way, effectively, you are eliminating the competition. And if you, you do, do that, you will pay heavily for it. Just one example which happened with my project. We were in the process of procuring routers. A good, very reputed vendor come to us and told us that out of your 500 pages bid document, on the page number 213, line number 5, sir, you have written that this uh, specification of the router, there is a line which says that it is 10 by 100, and sir, it should be 10 by 100 by 1000. That is all his request was. Now, being a commercial guy, I was absolutely unable to know what exactly he was talking about. But my approach to every problem is, to ask his competitors. Whenever someone comes to my, me with a proposal, I always ask his competitors what his opinion is. So I ran his request through his competitors. His competitors came back to me and told that this is very specialized kind of router, and if you do it, you will increase the cost by two crore rupees. Simply changing one line in a 500-page bid will do that. So do not fall in this trap. Do never fall in this trap. We were able to implement this project at a very, very reasonable cost only because we kept our specifications open and we kept on discussing with everyone in, in the room. We did not limit specification to specific vendors. And that saved us a lot of money. SI engagement, then again, 
if you are a really smart kind of organization, my predecessor speaker has talked in detail what smart means. I will again tell you, if you are a smart kind of organization, you really can get your projects implemented by someone who is not on site, someone who is sitting in a distant land. If your project is in US, someone, if your organization is smart and your project is in US, you can get that work done from India. But if you are trying to implement this kind of solution in an entity where average people is 50 years and no one has touched a computer mouse, do never agree for an off-site development model. It won't work. How, how did we learn it? Because before we went about implementing this project, we had another project and we had miserably failed in, in executing that project precisely because of this that the IT people did not sit with our business people in the same building. So if you really wish to do it in your organization and you think that your organization is not culturally that advanced, then you insist that your SI people should sit in your own office along with your own people. That will save you a lot of trouble and that will be a key success factor, I'll tell you. Then screen who is working from SI side on your project. That is very important. If you do not do it carefully, if you do not do it carefully, what will happen? The least desired resources from the SI stable will accumulate on your project. The managers who are least desired in their organization shall be shunted out to your project. So if you are not careful enough, you will get a bunch of idiots working for you. Do not allow that to happen. People may have very good CVs, but they won't deliver. So always be very insistent as to who is working from SI side on your project. Then ensure documentation. Particularly, always expect that someone who is very key, key kind of resource for you would be living at a very short notice. This happened with our project also, and this happens in all IT projects. Because, I mean, job opportunities are so galore, so uh, you, you, you can never know who shall live the next day. So always insist upon documentation. It may kill a tons of productive time, but you still insist on it. Then, finally, do not distribute the work among your teams also if that team is reporting to a different hierarchy. Do never do it. Either have resources completely in your control or do not talk to them. If you tell anyone else to do something and he is reporting to some other, it won't happen. It won't happen. So have the people who are working for you, work for you and leave others well in their domain also. Seek their cooperation but do not give them important responsibilities in your product design. Finally, when we had done this project, we were thinking as to whether we could have done anything differently. Should it, should it have been done like this? Or uh, if we are required to do it again, what shall we do? So these are four questions which come to my mind. I am still not too sure as to what should be the answer to these four questions. Number one is whether the data center should be owned or cloud-based. When we had started, the reliable cloud servicing, uh, cloud hosting services were not available in the country. But now I believe the reliable services are available. So that is a point to ponder, ki if you are not an IT organization and you, if you have difficulty in attracting the IT talent to work for you in your organization, is it a right strategy to have a tally data center in your organization? I would say that answer would vary differently and each organization would have its own set of answer. Secondly, single bit for SI and hardware are multiple bits. The model, as I told you, was multiple bits, but this model worked for us, fortunately. Still, it has got some problems. As I told you, my data center vendor was not ready, and my SI had told me that your software is ready, and I shall be leaving if you have no data center. 
So that was a very, very big risk for me. But if I had not done that, and if I had invited a single bid for SI and for software and for hardware, what would have happened? What happens in such circumstances? If you are asking people to quote on the L1, they would give the least possible hardware configuration that may not be sufficient to cater your future needs. And that has happened with us on another project. So I am, my opinion is still divided as to which, which method is a better method of inviting bids for this kind of projects. Pros and cons are there for both. Then the standard solution or custom development. Initially we thought that custom development is rubbish, so difficult to support, it is not a good thing. We should insist upon a ready-made and standard solution. So we went about it. But when the implementation team from SI came to us, they told us, no sir, this functionality is not there, you have to do custom. No sir, that functionality is not there, you have to do custom. In the end, you end up having a, a very big portion of your own ERP solution based on custom components. And I tell you, your, your SI or your OEM, they both are not going to support any of that custom component. They do not. So that again is a debate. Finally, licensing, as I told you, if you go for that cloud-based hosting, a lot of licensing issues are resolved. Finally, a few words of praise for our host today. And this I am not taking, uh, no one from Fujitsu has told me to tell, tell these things from this platform. These are my own, I, I should say, words of praise for Fujitsu for the way they handled our project. First number, they had a full range of servers, so you are not really required to procure a bigger server for your smaller needs. And I tell you, the difference is not only in the hardware cost, it is also in the software cost. Because if you have more cores and powerful processors, the licensing requirement dramatically changes. It multiplies. So they just had the right thing for our needs. That was a good advantage with them. Then their design had flexible, flexibility component. We can increase core, we can increase processor, we can core cap. Even if we have procured more cores, we can core cap so that licensing is not required. So that was also very good. Third thing, very reliable performance. For the three years we have been running our data center with Fujitsu based servers, not a single call has gone to Fujitsu. I think that is some credible performance. Then compatibility and a very, very responsive delivery team. As I told you, we were able to create our data center in three months flat. So that was our experience with Fujitsu. That is all. Thank you, gentlemen.